everyone at this point has heard a message from Micah Brahmins, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. So, Gia, can I get your help with something? So I'm curious, what are, yeah, <laughs> what are some things when you think about Micah Bromwitz when he's speaking, either his message yesterday or any message you've heard in your career, what's like one word that you see that he does really, really well? Energy. Okay, so Time. we're going to write some of these down. So energy. Engagement. Engagement. That's a good one. Swag. 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 Can I do the double sign? Sure. Yeah. Interaction. Um, passion. passion. Focus. Interaction. Right. That's good. Yeah, you're Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Friends. Means I myself. Preparation. Ooh, preparation. Yeah. Presence. Presence. Mm -hmm. Two to three more. Passion. Passion? Yeah, that. Okay. So, during his message, he's going to incorporate, and I'm sure you can learn a couple of these things. Now, you know, you guys know the bio. You, you saw the video yesterday, but this might be something that you don't know. Uh, Mike was sharing this with me on the way to an Uber uh, on a staff meeting, and we were chatting back and forth, and when Hurricane Irma came, and it was directly going to Pinellas County, he fled to his hometown. And smart businessman wanted to make sure he was able to write it off for taxes as a business trip. So he went and visited his old high school, his alma mater, and sat down with the assistant principal. And not only is there a pending contract to get grabbed into you know, the school, it's a $14,000 contract that will be reoccurring every time the students go. Not only is that pending, but he was nominated out of the I think 4,000 students that have graduated from his high school since his year, he was nominated to come back and speak to the graduating class. Wow. Just to give you an idea of his public speaking. So, you know, you know the bio, the guy kills it, makes sure you take a lot of notes. This this message could change your career because you every one of us, we get the script. We, we get what to say, but it's how we say it, and this guy's mastered it. So let's take some notes. Let's give Michael Brown with a big round of applause. Woo! Woo! I appreciate that. And what's really exciting is uh, you ever watch like uh, Denzel Washington and Steve Jobs and you see those videos on YouTube floating around and Facebook of them dressing in their, their gowns and speaking to the high school graduation. And that's what it, it's going to be an honor and a privilege to be able to do that uh, for my high school uh, this upcoming June, which I'm really excited about. So uh, I want to start with um, I want to start with this. My previous girlfriend. Some of you guys may have met her. She's a teacher. And she was teaching fourth grade, and she came up with the idea of trying to keep, keep her students calm. They're fourth grade, and she wanted to come up with an exercise to help them embody what it, it means to be calm and relax and soothing. So she asked each of the students to write down a word, one word, and I want you guys to do the same thing. You write on your sheet here. One word to describe the word Something that describes calming. Maybe it's an activity. Just the first word that comes to your mind to a, that embodies calmness. Calmness. Just one word. One word that embodies calmness. So she went around the room and she's looking at the different words that some people wrote down. And I see... Uh, Medi meditation, is that what yeah. it says? So meditation, I see uh, calmness, zen. She looks around the room, beach, relax, nap. And she sees on one of her students' sheets of paper, it says masturbation. <laughs> Fourth grade. says, so now that everyone wrote down this word, I'd like for everyone to go ahead and draw a picture <laughs> describing this word. 
she, she was very intrigued. So she walks around and she's seeing like a picture of a sun, seeing all these, you know, sleeping. And she's peeking over at this one here and she sees a big belly and hands in the air going like this. And she says, oh, you mean meditation, right? <laughs> And then the kid says, oh, it's not masturbation? <laughs> and then all the other kids in the class, like two or three snickered, and, and instantaneously, boom, the kid, uh, her perspective and perception of the, of the kid changed. So I start my message with helping you understand where you're at with public speaking. I think, the me I think individuals in this room think public speaking is one thing, and my goal is to help you have a paradigm shift and help you think and understand my perception of public speaking in a different light. And that's why I'm grateful for Scott and the division managers for being in the room, because I think there is, there's area for opportunity when it comes to the words public speaking. You could change those words out for anything different from effective communication to engagement to <coughs> audience interaction. But I think what my main objective of this message is not only to flip the switch and help you think about it differently, and also give you tools of influence on how you can influence the audience. But I really, what I really want to get accomplished, I'm here to serve you. And I, I, want to, I want to make sure that each of you individuals understand the power that we have. I know you already know this, and I'm just reminding what you already know, that we have the power to influence the audience and really move people. But with the old fundamental styles of public speaking, which is standing at this podium and reading off a script, there's one thing that we take away. And that's the ability to, to impact the audience. These words that you put up, energy, engagement, passion, focus, and interaction is one of the words. If we're standing behind a podium, if we're not exposed, it's very tough to interact. And I'm going to teach and I'm going to talk about some of these fundamentals today. But there are certain, certain belief systems we need to change and work through if we really want to impact our audience and move people in a way different than what we've already always done. So, you ever, everybody have a handout? Does anybody not have a handout? If you don't have a handout, you can raise your hand. If you don't have a handout, you can raise your hand. And, uh, and Carlos might be able to facilitate that for me. Uh, looks like there might be an action up there. Uh, that'd be fantastic. You get those. If I could have uh, the two individuals, uh, volunteers, I really just need one actually. If you could continue, that'd be great too. Uh, if you could stand by the, uh, by the little thing, just like you did. You're going to be doing some stuff. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. By the way, it's freaking Gio! 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 All right, so here's the question. I want you guys, we already kind of, we're going to just continue on this list. What makes an effective speaker? Not Mike Abramowitz. My style is not the poster child of speaking. What I do want to know is what makes an effective speaker. You get a hard message. It's inside, factor, and outside. Here's what I don't want. I don't want individuals in this room thinking just vector marketing. How many of us go to a sermon, right? If you're, if you're in the religious community, right? You think about a sermon. You think about you go to a school or a lecture or a networking event or a conference or, or any, any type of effective speaking, not just vector marketing. I'm talking about effective speaking. What are some qualities that you find that the speaker brings to the, to, to the, to the message that makes you stay engaged. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about that makes you stay engaged. In this room right now, I could see 90% of the room is engaged. And that's who I'm going to focus on as a speaker. There are one or two that are disengaged. And that's okay. That's okay. But as a speaker, I'm not speaking to those individuals. I'm speaking to the ones that are engaged, right? The ones that have their hands out. The ones that are eager. Just a, just a thought as I'm giving a public speaking message while also teaching public speaking just to kind of get you guys to understand. So we're talking about engagement. What creates engagement? So, so we have, well, a bunch of hands. So keep your hands up. I'll, I'll go. We'll, we'll go for value. it. Value. So offering value to the, to, to the uh, receiver. Value. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Questions. 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 Yeah. Who's got energy? Energy. So we have that one. Humor. Humor is always good. Stories. <laughs> stories. I'm going to talk about stories here in just a moment. Excellent. Knowledge. So being knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. Thank you. Um, understanding the times. So understanding the times meaning. Like time signals or relevance to what's happening in the world. What's happening in the world. So okay, so relevance. Relevance. Excellent. 
clarity, meaning speaking clear or speaking clearly and, and presenting it as clear. So presenting with clarity. So present clarity. And you can use, uh, ideally we use one thing because I have another one over there, but yeah, if you can fit them all, that'd be great. Okay. Look just like you're doing, we have more though. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Structure. Structure. Is there, there's Ooh. structure and outline. Visual. Visual. So there's a visual, meaning like a keynote or something on stage, right? So they're vulnerable. So you put expose if you want to spell that long word. Connection. There's a connection. A connection. I like that. There's a stage present. So present. Okay. Same thing. Present. Go over here. Front. Tempo. There's a tempo. Tempo. Knowing your audience. Knowing the audience. This one is so critical. Would I say my <coughs> masturbation story if I was in, in uh, one of the middle schools? Probably not. <laughs> Would I say my masturbation story if I was uh, do a PTS I spoke to 1,800 parents in the middle school, Thurgood Marshall Middle School? Uh, I'm probably not going to start off with the, the masturbation story. But I know my audience, right? Just to kind of give you an idea. But it's a really funny story. Right? Uh, empathy. 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 We'll take these last two. Me, passion. Passion. Confidence. And confidence. Excellent. Got that. Just like I mentioned in my message yesterday, which seems like a long time ago, I think for a moment. Good job. <laughs> are all these characteristics, are they, are, can you replicate these? Yes. Absolutely. It takes this word, write this word down. And then GM, I'm going to go into the other, the other one here in just a second. Yeah. Write this word down intentionality. Intentionality. These take intention. Many times we get up there because we have a title. We get it. We, oh, well, I'm an assistant manager. Therefore, I can just show up to my team meeting and just deliver a message. I may, you fill in the blank. Therefore, I can just show up and deliver a message because of my title. Titles do not form intentionality. Titles do not mean much when it comes to speaking. Speaking and embodying these principles or these characteristics it's more than that, and that's what we're going to dig into today. So what I went ahead and did, it was a little bit on the fly, uh, but I thought it would be effective. I, asked, I had, a, I don't know, several dozen people come up to me after my message yesterday, and it's always an honor every time it happens, and they say, wow, great message. It was really great. And my response is something like, typically, well, thank you, I really appreciate that. Well, what, did, what, did, what resonated with you specifically? And I ask them that because I like to engage in conversation and be curious. This time I changed my follow-up question. My follow-up question was, what made that message different than the other messages you saw? What made it different? Why was it, there, so someone told me, so a Dave, a David Kirshner came up to me, he was like, dude, top three messages that I heard at SLC. What made it, what made it top three? That's, a, that's an unbelievable compliment. But what made it that way? Because I want to help more people. This isn't the Mike Abramowitz show. This is Let's As Vector Marketing Become Very Effective Communicator Show. Right? We want to serve people. So how do we do that? How do we do that? So I went ahead and I asked some people, and I put in a couple of videos, because now might be a little hard. Cool. Go. All right. So uh, I think one of the biggest things is just that whenever it's that peak time, whenever it's time to get excited, uh, Mike starts moving around a lot. You know, putting a lot of energy, his volume goes up. And um, he just gets fired up, so everyone else gets fired up naturally. So uh, I think it's just really easy whenever he's putting that much energy into the talk to get fired up as well. So. Here's what's interesting. Mike Abramowitz is actually not high energy. If you know Mike Abramowitz, you know Mike Abramowitz is actually very low key. Mike Abramowitz, when he is by himself, likes to pick up a book, play a little guitar, sit in his massage chair, do, do uh, you know, uh, some reading, and be pre pretty damn low key. If you ask my wife, I'm pretty low key. But I have a responsibility and an obligation to my people to serve them. So therefore, I need to tap into these if I want to penetrate and help individuals learn the lesson I'm trying to teach. Any light bulbs on that? Shh. I'm a banker innovator, for those of you guys that know CBI. That is introvert. That's what that means. It is not my tendency to have energy. But yet, if you ask and survey people, they say it's about energy. If you see me in the back of the room, my, my state is very mellow. But when I'm serving, I have to tap into that energy. It is a responsibility of the speaker. 
Yes, is it, is it uncomfortable standing in the back of the room in the corner, doing my breathing exercise and getting my head in the right place? Absolutely. Awkward, if you will, because if one or two people might turn around and say, what the hell is he doing in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> so that's not my focus. What's my focus? My focus is being intentional. I'm here to serve you. It's awkward, uncomfortable, but necessary. So I just want you to understand this. It's a responsibility when it comes to speaking. So we know what creates engagement. And could we agree that if I surveyed every one of you intelligent individuals in this room, if I asked you how to do these, we could probably pair up, you guys could pair share, you could come up with an idea of how to do every one of these. Yeah. I'm pretty confident, I, I, get, I get at random, grace. Uh, and, and interaction, if I had to ask you on how to interact with an audience, do you think you could give us a couple of tips on that? <coughs> on how to interact with an audience? Probably, right? Brian, uh, pre preparation, probably. Pretty simple, right? These are very simple. The question is not do we know what to do, the question is are we doing what we know? Mm. Ooh, my vote. Ooh. All right, so zone out. So what makes you zone out? I had one or two people, and I'm not gonna call them out because I'm not gonna embarrass people, <laughs> all right? But there was one or two in my opening that were zoned out. They were zoned out. Whether it was a cell phone out or whatever it might be, you know, and that's okay. But I'm, I'm asking you, not because it's an insult to me, I'm asking you so you know what causes people to zone out. So if you know what it is, to avoid it. Does everyone see? So you know what makes you zone out? I'll start you off. Filler words. Does that make you zone out? How many of you guys ever hear someone say the filler word? Okay, um, like, you know, do you know what I mean? And you stop paying attention to the message, you start listening to filler words? Say I if you know what I'm talking about. I. Right? So that, that's one. So right, fellas. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do a couple here. So this, this one right here is what makes you zone out. That's what we're doing right here. What makes you zone out. So fillers. I'm going to help you guys out a little bit. I'll get you started. And then I'm going to come and you guys are going to rapid fire speed, okay? Because you already know the answers here. You already know the answers here. What about rambles? Does that make you zone out? Yes. Yeah. Rambles make you zone out too. When they're completely just talking about something that is not purposeful to the message. How many of us, how, how many of us that ha happens at staff meetings, right? All the time. Go off on this random tangent that is not underlining the objectives of what you're trying to accomplish at the staff meeting, and you go off on this ramble. So just a thought there, rambles. So let's go through, let's go through. You guys, you guys know the answers here. What makes you zone out? Monotone. Monotone. Monotone makes you zone out. Lack of voice inflection. Lack of voice inflection. Zone out. Talking about Oh, so it's, it's all about me. Yeah. Significance. Here's what I'll say. If you need to satisfy your need of significance through public speaking, you are not serving your cause. I'm so good. I'm the expert. This message is about me and how good I am. Take notes. <laughs> I'm the authority. Right? It makes, this, it makes you disconnect. It's a disengagement, for sure. I agree. I agree. Come over here. Disingenuous. So not uh, uh, disingenuous, not genuine? Yeah. How can you tell? I want to talk about this one for a moment. Noah, right? Yeah. So lacks, uh, what would be a ingenuity? Would that be the word? Disingenuous. 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 I like it. How can you tell? I'm curious. Could anybody, can anybody agree with that, by the way? Say I if you could agree with that. So I agree. But how can you tell? Because I think there's some people in this room right now, Noah, and, and I, I think there's some people in this room right now that think they're being genuine, but when the audience member hears them speak, they feel something different. Does anybody agree with that? Say I. I. I think I'm being genuine. I feel like I'm being genuine. I prepare to be genuine. But it's not being received that way. How can you tell? I think it's uh, two things. I think body language when they're saying it. Like, you know, the community on that, that knows that their point is and not really feeling it. And I think it just seems as if you your body is saying So body language, I'm going to, let me, bef let's get your second one. So body language, just write that down so we fo follow up on what was the second one. Lack of repetition? Well, yeah, it's like they haven't found what their stage presence is, stage presence is yet, so it's just giving them. 
Okay, I, so lack of preparedness, I could agree with that. Let me talk about the body language for a moment. Sure. We're all salespeople, right? We're all salespeople. There's, a, there's matching and mirroring, mm -hmm. but then there's also another, once you match and mirror, you use matching and mirroring to create what? What's the R word we teach our reps? We, we match and mirror to create rapport, right? But once you're in rapport, you take it to the next part, which is what called? Pacing and leading. So it's pacing and leading. Some people come up to the stage and they go, they pull this one. How's everybody doing today? And they force it upon their audience, right? That's not matching and mirroring, that's not pacing and leading. If you notice about, and, and I wanna make sure that you get this here, you gotta get rapport for them to feel like you're being genuine. You gotta get rapport first. Here's an interesting tool, okay? I paid a lot of money for this tool, so you guys can thank me, ready? <laughs> When I was just talking to Noah right here, okay, I'm talking to Noah, and here's a, here's, a, here's a simple tool. If I go like this, and I'm talking to Noah, but I just, just put my hand on somebody over here, everyone else in the audience feels that I'm speaking to them. They feel there's a connection, they feel like there's a rapport. Even though I'm talking to one, I didn't even look at anybody else, I was talking to Noah the whole time, but there was a rapport that I felt like I was talking to everybody else, it's real subtle. Maybe. Did you, did, well, let me ask you guys. When I was just talking to Noah, were, did you disengage? No. Were you still paying attention? Yes. So that's your answer. So we see? No. So you can put, so, so you got it, you, you want to, you want to attract him. And these are tools, these are tools. I agree with you. You see? And it's, it's simple. Human touch, right? Energy. So now I can pace and lead you. What did I do? Genuine. We're talking about being genuine. Now it sounds so cliche. The whole what's a cliche vector marketing for Matthew Kelly? Yes or yes. Yes or yes. Yes or yes. yes, or yes. Right? And I'm not saying that's bad. I just think it's overused. I'm not saying it's bad. I just think it's overused. There's, a, there's better ways. There's more eloquent and intellectual ways to create engagement. For example. For example. Uh, and, and all the things I, I just steal from the experts, you, you know, that say I, the yes, you know, all that. It, who, who is that? Tony it's Tony Robbins, but it works. It works. Here's a couple of things. Um, how many of you guys, how many of you guys could agree? You could even drop the tone on this one. How many of you guys could agree? How many of you guys could agree that, whatever it might be? And, and watch, ready? There's a, there's a little couple subtleties here. If I want to, if I want to feel, if I want to get in rapport, I want to get rapport. I might be genuine, but I want to get rapport. There's something like this. You might watch my opposite hand sometimes come up like this. It's so subconscious and unconscious. So how many guys, how many guys uh, agree? Could you agree? Could you agree? And I go, you know, there's might be a little subtlety. It's very subtle. This is tapping into a different side of our brain. It's subtle. How many guys could agree? And I go, like something like this. And I'll connect one or two people, just maybe three, maybe four, a few. How many of you guys could agree? And I'll nod, and I see, you know, Blake's nodding with me, so I'll, I'll, you know, a little. How many of you guys could agree? And I'll get a couple of head nods, a couple of head nods, and then I'll raise my hand. And what all of a sudden happens? Three, four people raise their hand, then everyone else does. Which creates what? <clears throat> rapport. It can get engagement, rapport, and it makes them feel like I'm being genuine, which I am, but I have to have rapport before I can pace and lead them. Again, a little advanced, but I want you to, the purpose of my message, the number one objective, is to change the way you think about public speaking. Public speaking is not about getting behind the podium and delivering a message. I want you to write this down. Content versus context. Who would like to take a shot at the difference? So content, the words I'm saying, the material. Right. Content, the Context material. Context would be more so like the crowd or the specific audience you're catering to. The, the, the engagement of the audience, the space, the energetic of the room, which one's more important? Con if, if, content is, if content is king, context is God and the universe. Because without it, it doesn't matter how, how rich your material is if it's not being landed. Everyone see? So you want to, you, you want to, if you really want to penetrate your audience, if you really want to get them to understand, you have to have that, the, the, 
the genuine feel with your audience. How do you create genuine feel? You gotta get in rapport. How do you get in rapport? That's just one tool. Get them to agree with you. Get them to agree with you. Get them to interact with you. I like the whole, how are we doing there? Forcing it. Ah, you can't do that in some places. The pastor, I, I, don't, I, haven't, I don't go to church, but you probably could agree with me that when the, the pastor, the priest, so whoever's about to give the sermon comes on up, how's everybody doing today? You know, like, gets them all, uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know, I, I, maybe. But I gotta lead to believe he works the crowd a little bit. Here's another way on how to create engagement. Okay, how to get before. All you need is a few. All you need is a few. As I'm walking up, as, as, as the MC's introducing me, okay, as the MC's introducing me, I'm, I'm using my nonverbals and my body language to get people to agree with me before I even get to the stage. So while, while my video was playing, I don't know if any of you guys saw what I was doing yesterday in yesterday's message, but while the MC's introducing me, I'm walking up to the stage and I'll stand next to somebody and I'll just look at them and make some eye contact and give them a smile and a nod and get them into a yes frame before it gets to the mic. <laughs> Did anybody notice that, by the way? Yeah. Almost every message. Almost every message. And when I get when I get close, I get close, I just make, I don't need a few. Get a few head nods. Get a few head nods, couple, right? And look at them, then they'll make a, uh, there's a connection, and I can move on. So by the time I get to the, by, by the time I get up here, there's already a rapport. I can tell my story, and I have engagement from a couple of people. It's about making people feel like you're being genuine. Even though I might be, it might not be landing. So I appreciate that. Well, let's get a couple more. What makes you zone out? What else makes you zone out? Jeff, please. Reading. Reading. Just sitting there. All right, guys, so I'm going to talk to you today about uh, financial mastery, and I want to tell you how to save a lot of money. I have uh, 16 bullet points for you, so get ready to take some notes. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> automatically, automatically disengaged. Disengaged, I agree. Lack of format, or lack of creating content. Oh, format. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let's feel into that. Tell us, tell us what you mean. Because the audience doesn't know when the, what, what's going to happen next, right? So if the audience doesn't know what's going to happen next, and if it's not engaging, they're going to disengage. I agree. Too often we get up there and ramble a little bit. Please. Oh, uh, just kind of piggybacking off of that, I'd say congrats. Just lack of planning. Like if I can tell you this person doesn't have a focus, or it's like rambling, making it, like, not making it out, but like, yeah. I remember, I remember having this conversation with many, many managers. They're like, wow, how'd you feel about the message? Oh, I felt like it went well. It was like, you know, I felt like it went well. Yeah, man, I just, these, these were my notes. And it was like four words. Four words, man, I just went in there and just felt it. I just figured I would just wing this one. I just wanted to deliver with passion. It's not preparedness. That's not preparedness. Yes. You guys, you know, have passion and talent, but there are some fundamentals that get lost with the lack of preparedness, for sure. I agree. Let me get a couple more. Couple more, Carlos, Jeff, and then we'll go over here. To what, tell me your name, please. Yeah. A D. A D. A D. Um, I was going to come to you in just a moment. Jeff, Carlos, and then a D. Thank you. Right. Hey, write this down. This is good. Hey, if there was, hey, I encourage you to write this down. Hey, if there's anything you want to get down today, this is one thing I would get down. Versus, everyone, if you do not have a pen right now, grab a pen, write this down right now. You don't, you know, I agree. If you feel like you're being talked to or talked at or belittled, disengagement. Good, Carlos, and then Adi. Yeah. What am I looking to get out of this message? Why am I here? Why am I even in this room? You know, and, and that's why I'm so grateful for the DVM's time, Scott's time. Why am, why am I in this room? If I don't offer value, Scott's going to be like, hey, it was pretty good. But I didn't receive value. So I think it's important as well. And then a D? Similar to what you said, like aggression. Just in general, when you're talking. 
Yeah, yeah. And, 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 that's, and sometimes there is an aggressive personality, just like my natural tendency or my natural personality is to not be energetic, but that comes from self-awareness. But that also, it also comes from maturity and responsibility. Let me get a couple more, one or two more. So we'll go over here and then to Brian. Um, so just talking too fast or too quiet. Mm. Too fast, too quiet, lack of tone, lack of tempo. What else causes disengagement? How did you zone out? Like a flow. How would you describe that? <clears throat> that every piece fits together and transitions between an intro to point one to point two to point three to a wrap up <coughs> where it feels like it's all part of a whole versus different sections of the message. Mm. I'll demonstrate it for those of you guys. This is Steve Field. So this so that's energy. Cool. So next topic here is what makes you zone out, <laughs> right? Is it just kind of demonstrate I, I, what, from what I interpreted. Anytime you look at this like this, <laughs> you're disengaging with your audience. I've had people, I've seen managers, and I've seen people talk to the screen. Bam. You may have seen that one before, right? This this isn't who you're talking to. Right? And if you don't know what's on the screen, you walk over here, <coughs> you make your point, and then you come back and take the <laughs> <of the> screen. <laughs> but you don't want to disconnect with your audience. Because context, energetic, the feel. How it's being received. A lack of allegory throughout the message. You know, everyone likes a good story. Mm -hmm. and, and especially in Jeff's last few messages. Killing it. There's been a part of a story that's, that's, that's really threaded throughout all the instruction in the message. And that keeps people really engaged. And wanting more, like wanting the next chapter. Ooh. So Jeff, I know that you're going to talk here in just a moment. Biggest 30 second plug on how to deliver a great story. Uh, 30 second plug, a genuine, actual doesn't need to be built up. Uh, you can't make sure it has relevance. Sense of story or attention. Either a story to create attention, regain humor, levity, or a story that has meaning to the person of the message. You know, the blood pressure story. And, and to piggyback of what Jeff is saying, just for those of you guys, as far as the relevance of the stories, have stories like your go-to stories. Like that masturbation story, I told that like years ago. The meditation, well, I'll call it the meditation one, so, they, oh, so I stop saying it. <laughs> So the meditation story. <laughs> By the way, what I just did right there, that was intentional. I just want to point that out. Why? Because you guys weren't laughing. Does everyone see? Ooh. The tone and the vibe and the energetic in the room was a little low, so what did I do? Humor. humor. I used humor to create engagement. Does everyone Ooh. see this? Yeah. So again, this is a difficult message to do because I'm trying to instruct, but I'm also using my space to also give you the insights of how to do what I'm teaching you how to do. Does everyone see this? Yeah. It's, very cha it's, a cha it's not an easy message by any means if you wanted to connect. But humor is a great way to, and now that might take away from my, my message, but it definitely took away from my message of what I just did, but I want you to find and see how to incorporate that. Know your space. That comes from awareness. I have my notes. I, I, I don't think I looked at them yet because I know the material. I know my objective. So if you give a message, and, and we're, gonna go, we're gonna do an exercise here in just a moment. And if you're giving a message, there is one objective. 
and a few singular points. If you have two or three objectives of your message, you're missing it. One objective and one objective only for this message. Does anybody remember what it is? Change the way you think about public speaking. That's it. Change the way we think about public speaking. To say, well, I have this title, therefore I am. I could say the same thing, I could do the same thing, I could do say blah, blah, blah. No. We will not grow as a region. Region, Scott, what's our goal as a region? How many offices? 120 full deployment. 120 full deployment to do $40 million in sales. Is that right? 120 offices, 40 million. And if we run shitty events, which we're going to talk about here shortly, or if we get them to pay money to come to an event, and we mail it in, and I'm going to talk about MC duties in just a moment, but we get up on a stage, and we just, oh, I gave the same message two years ago, so I'm just going to use the same thing. It's okay to model it. It's okay. And, and I'm, here, I'm not here for salt and wound. I just want to bring attention to a very important topic that we've all been on the receiving end of. It's painful sometimes. Any other ones on zone out before I continue? We'll take uh, Andy and then, and, and then over to Hunter, and then we'll go over to Jeff. We'll take four more. We'll take four more, please. Andy, and then uh, Hunter, and then Jeff, and then one more. What a message goes to all There's an agenda and they're way over. So if it, it drags, if it drags. What's that? No, I'm here to serve. That's why I still want to hear you, because the answers are in the room. The answers are in the room. You don't need me to tell you how to do this. Hunter? On the opposite end of the I would say, on a certain level, a little bit more than anxiety, because it shows you're not confident in yourself what you're speaking about. Meek, uncertainty. Sure. Yeah. And what creates uncertainty in a lot of cases is lack of preparedness. Uh, and Jeff? If, if it's, if, so if it stays at that? Yeah. We've been on the receiving end that long. Kind of take it back to what Ron was saying. Right? I mean, we've been guilty of that one where we're just talking into the mic the whole time and you feel like you're being reprimanded and yelled at. Right? Uh, we'll take uh, we'll take one more. Who was the other one? Cool. Over there, right in the center. Come here. Sam. 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 Yeah. Uh, repetition, and I think it kind of plays on the cliche you were talking about, but then also if they repeat a point over and over again. And it's a point to the whole message, and it's yeah. not sense, but it's just like a small point that we're repeating over and over again, and kind of, I just want to zone out and pay attention. Yeah. Lacks of it, uh, creates a lack of interest. What I just did right there, by the way, of creating these lists, Went a little long. It went a little long. As a public speaker, it went a little long. But, I, but I'm okay with that because I want to make sure my audience feels like I'm actually what? I'm listening to my audience because context is king. Now, the, the people that aren't volunteering and talking might disengage, but I'm going to get them to engage here in just a moment. But the ones that did volunteer and share some thoughts, they're fully engaged. We're on the same team. We're, we're synergized. And then I'm going to use those people who are engaged to get everybody else engaged. Does everyone see that? Yeah. You don't need everyone engaged the entire time. But when I do see someone who's disengaging, I'm using them as like my hot points to create engagement amongst everybody else. How do you do that? Well, a video is a great idea. How do you do that? Tell a story, humor. Get them to stand up, do a pair share. <coughs> Turn to the partner. I chose video. When I go to conferences, I don't really know who people are, so I feel like when they present because they're a district manager or they're a branch manager with the title, I feel like, I mean, they just speak on the stage, but with a certain type of authority, but when Mike speaks, I like how he gets into the crowd and it holds himself as in like one of us. But essentially what she said is connecting with the crowd. What she likes about when I speak is I connect with the crowd. I'm standing over here and walk into the crowd. That also creates engagement or disengagement. Could we agree? No or yes? Right? If we stand behind the podium the entire time and we don't come in front, we're not exposing ourselves, which lacks a genuine out. Genuine? 
So, right, we lack that. It doesn't, so exposure, which also creates a disconnect between you and the audience. So being in front, don't, if we just stand behind the podium the entire time, we don't, we don't let them feel like they're connecting with us. Uh, the, 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 the last video left for it, and then we're gonna do an exercise. So, uh, here's my So, a uh, big thing, uh, as far as what I've gotten from watching all the talks, especially Mike, he, uh, when he recognizes people in the audience or volunteering, uh, in our business, recognition is a really big thing. Uh, so when you recognize somebody for giving a great um, feedback, even if it's just a small recognition, other people pay more attention because they want to be the next person to get recognized. Um, and it's just driving, uh, making everybody want to pay more attention during the talk. So, uh, and you might, you might remember yesterday, of course, you know, Elizabeth being brave to volunteer and anybody someone volunteering to give them a book or a high five or a round of applause. Uh, it just makes them feel good. It makes everybody else want to volunteer as well, right? And we'll demonstrate that right now. Gia, thank you so much for writing this down. Guys, it's Gia. freaking Gia! Gia. Thank you. So, we know this. On an intellectual level, we know this. Did, we, we get, did you at least get one value point where you're like, man, I never thought about it that way? Say I if you got at least one piece of value. I. Give me those real quick. Shout them out. Give me, give me one piece of value, down, Orlando. Great, right. Uh, hand movements? Yeah, oh, the hand movements, got it. Excellent. One objective. One objective. What do I want that? What do I want them to leave with? That's it. One thing. Build rapport with the audience. Build rapport with the audience. Uh, being an introvert is not an excuse to be an effective speaker. Ooh. 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 <laughs> There's a great TED talk about that, by the way. Yeah. Great TED talk. So I want, to tra I want to transition into, into the handout. And uh, on the very back page, the, or the second page is, the, uh, is an assessment. And the front and back of the document are just some, some tools that you can take with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple assessment of you as a speaker. And you want to be honest with yourself, of course. And it's only for you, and maybe you want to share it with your higher up, or your running mate, or whoever is above you. But I want you to really be honest with a couple of things, uh, a couple of sessions. I'm going to walk you through some of these. So I'm going to walk you through some of these. So it says knowing your info, or search the topic. So if you look on the handout where it says knowing your info before delivery, Research the topic. Being the expert, check the facts prior. Rate yourself. One through five. Five being perfect. Who does not have a handout, by the way? Do you have extra somewhere? I, I would love, I would love, I know the DVMs are in the room. I would love the DVMs to do this assessment as well. Uh, I would love for everyone in this room to do assessment. And this is for you. It's for you. When it is like did you intend that when we rate ourselves in scales, it's how well we do them, or uh, this is a great question. More, more our effort we put into doing them. This is a great question. I would say yes. So the assessment is for you. I think if I were going to take this assessment, I would say a five is what I think my best looks like, and my actual score is what I honestly believe I am. So a five, researching your topic, being the expert before you get on stage and taking the mic. Or you rate yourself one through five. Next one. So knowing the info, researching the topic. How much time do you spend researching the topic? For this topic on public speaking, grab your audience, because this will be a book that I'll be launching under the Grab Tomorrow model called Grab Your Audience. I mean, I, Hours researching this topic. The, the Talk Like Ted book, by the way, if you like books and you want to read a great one, Talk, Talk Like Ted is a great one. How to craft messages, highly encourage that. I know there's some people in the room that could benefit from it because one of the, rule, one of the rules in the book is to not put up slides with a lot of text because if they're writing notes, writing the information down from the slide, then they're no longer listening to the speaker. 
And too often, we have managers put up slides with all of their content on the screen, bullet pointed out, which creates disengagement. The slides are for memes or photos, something like this. Deliver the content, don't rely on your screens. Shows a lack of ability. So that's one little point that maybe someone might benefit from. How do you outline your talk? How do you outline your talk? For me, one of the things that really helps when I outline my talk, I do the body first. I do the body of the first, the talk first to get my meat, but my objective number one, and then my body. My intro is the last thing I do. The intro is the last thing I do. The whole purpose of the intro is to get them to listen to me. To create rapport. Learning the material. So rate yourself one through five on each of those. Next point is prep for the message. As far as attire, most of you are way better dressed than I am. Pages number, backup printed. One of the things that I have for me is on, if you look at my keynote, I use my presenter notes. And I also have my handout, so I have it on both. So that way I have my presenter notes here, so if I'm behind the podium, so I don't have to open it up and look like and kind of bury myself in my handouts. And just to kind of give you a little, again, another inside ninja move. So while I, while I use my uh, space, and maybe I'm coming down here, and then I'm walking up, and I'm walking up, and I'll look at my notes to kind of find my spot to look as much as I can, and then the rest of it's on my screen. Just a thought there. So, so that way I'm not breaking my connection with my audience. At, at least I'm not doing it as much as possible. I'm trying to minimize that. The purpose of me giving you these secret tips or these ninja moves, I paid a thousand bucks to go to a speaking empire event to learn a lot of this. Read a lot of books on this topic. So I'm only going to charge you $10 each to your Vector Connect account <laughs> to reimburse me. I'm sharing you some of this content because people say, wow, Micah Bromowitz really brings the thunder when he speaks. It's not the Micah Bromowitz show. That's not why I do what I do. It's to help you become the best version of you as a speaker. So we can hit 120 offices and you can develop branch managers and districts and put on fantastic events and make them want to come back for more. So how would you rate yourself? All right, let's continue. So set the stage, prep the room. Now this was interesting because you witnessed this uh, backfire for me yesterday with the microphone. Now I came in early to do the microphone and it worked great. And then all of a sudden, the battery died. Now, it's really not too much I can do about that. Right? So I try, but hey, sometimes you just gotta roll with it. But are you checking the microphones before you get to the stage? Check the space. Now this space is really easy, this is simple. This is a great space because it's, you know, you have the stage, you got a centered room. But how often do we speak at a conference and it's like off center, like there's a screen on this side of you and then the podium is like over here and it's not centered and sometimes it's straight centered. So you wanna know, you know your space. How well do you know your space? For example, anytime I come to a room, I want, to, I want to know how loud I need to speak when I need to have a microphone. But I also want to know what is it going to take for me. So if I have Brian in the back, what is it going to take for me to connect with him in the back to make sure that I don't lose him and I don't lose everyone up here? So if I knew that the DVMs, you know, I, you know were saved like that and was all filled, what I would do is I would have come probably about to here, a good majority of my message. What would have happened? By you coming over here and looking this way at you. You guys look the majority will turn their head, but I'll at least connect with these individuals over here. What's automatically going to happen? Any cell phones, computers, they'll, they'll look up. They'll look up eventually if I continue to project my voice this way. When I'm, over, when I'm back here, that's their safe space. And I'm not, you know, this isn't about DVMs, this is about at a conference when you have 400 people. And you have someone on the way back. You think about a Tony Robbins event with 9,000 people. 
you got to connect. How do you connect? You got to go into the audience, but you got to go into it a far enough to be able to make sure you don't lose the people in the back. Too many of us stay behind that podium and you're losing the back half of, all, half of the event. And then you say, How'd you think about the event? Wasn't it awesome? They're like, Yeah. When you ask me a question like that, it was awesome. <laughs> you know? Did you get some stuff out of it? Yeah, yeah, I got some stuff out of it. Great. But I force them to feel like they got value. All right, let's rapid fire through these. So check the space, meet the crowd. Meet the crowd, we talked a little bit about that. How well do you do that before your message? How intentional? I would say how intentional are you before you, uh, before you come up to your message? Prep the MC. Carlos and I had a whole little chat about how, what I wanted him to say about me. I pulled Brian aside and said, hey, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to talk about MC here in just a moment, but you want to let them know this exercise I was going to do during my message, but I figured out, you know what? It's going to sound egotistical. It might create disengagement if I did this. So instead, I'm going to have Carlos, my MC, do this for me. How horrible would it have been if Carlos listed off a bunch of stats about Mike Abramowitz that you guys already knew? You're going to be disengaged before, the, before it even starts. Whose responsibility is it to prep the MC? The speaker. Many of us just shoot him a bio and say, hey, just read this. What? I'm going to talk about MC in just a moment, but it's the speaker's responsibility to say, what do I want the room to feel before I get to the stage? When you're at a team meeting, an, a division meeting, whatever it might be, what do I want the room to feel like before I get to the stage? That's the speaker's responsibility. How well do you do that? Ability with different types of messages. So we have instructional. So instructional, do you allow the crowd to take notes? How many of us do this? In the audience, you hear something that was really, really good. And by the time the person finishes the sentence, that was when you finally reached for your pen. And you're like, crap, I freaking missed what they said. And then they didn't repeat it. And you're like, did you, did you get that? And you're missing the next thing they're about to say. So in an instructional message, if I want someone to write it down, it's like, guys, just so you know, I'm about to give you a really impactful tip that might be able to help you with public speaking. Is it okay if I give you that tip? Yeah. Cool? So I'm about to give you a really good phrase that I'd encourage you and invite you to write down. You guys ready? I'll say that before I give that little piece of advice. Just a thought frame, framing it with instructional messages. Allow the crowd to take notes. Do you have handouts? Do you allow them to role play if possible? Instructional messages, giving them the improved results. So it's like, hey guys, I know you came to uh, I know you came to this message today to learn how to how to learn about recommendations. I know it's a bold statement, but my goal and my objective is during this message, by the time it's done, is to help you increase your recommendations by five extra recommendations per appointment. It's a bold statement, but are you guys okay in holding me to that to give you enough value today? to help you increase your recommendations by one, by five. That's how you could start an instructional message. You could start an instructional message with, with, with the desired outcome of what you want the audience to have, and now they're waiting for those phrases and ready to take notes. Informant, informational, who, what, when, where, why. It's like an event, what's important now. How well do you deliver that? Motivational, I know it says unleash the passion. Risking vulnerability, being exposed, that's tough. Is that a seven? That's tough sometimes to risk vulnerability. I used to be horrible at this, I used to be shielded. And, I, and I'll tell you, the reason why I was shielded is because I would start crying. Many, many, I had, I had someone come up to me yesterday after my message, uh, it was actually one of Amir's guys, and uh, you know he was going through some tough times, and he's just like, man, when you shared that about your 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 buddy Nick and about your mom, and I felt like I really just connected with you. You know, I'm dealing with some stuff too. I appreciate you sharing. How many of us have a story? We all have a story, right? And sometimes it's tough. I don't lean on my audience for validation for confidence, but I do expose myself from time to time because I want them to know that I'm like you. I'm a people's champion, if you will. There's not a hierarchy. I'm like you, and I was where you are, and they feel that way. 
they feel like I would put it. So, uh, when Mike ever uh, goes up to speak, he always tells a little bit about himself, about his background and his history, allowing people to connect to him and uh, have a connection between the uh, person and Mike, and for whatever he says, allowing uh, the person to open up a little bit and become a little more liberal, uh, and people become more Especially motivational. I, th I remember one of Larry's most memorable messages. I've heard Larry speak a lot, but it was when he told his story. He got real vulnerable with it. It was awesome. It's still memorable to this day. But many people don't get a chance to see that side of our DBM team because they're nervous that people are going to think that they're weak when realistically vulnerability takes courage. Vulnerability takes courage. If you don't believe that, I would go watch Brene Brown's talk on TED about vulnerability and the power in it. So motivational. Prepare the message, opening. Opening, opening is the audition. How well do you connect with the audience before you even continue, before you even start? There's different ways to do that with questions, quotes, effective story, improved results. How well do you feel like you connect in the opening of your message, the body, that's delivering the information. I love stories. I think stories are uh, the prob probably the most effective way to land home. Uh, any fact, any fact is a great way to, is to uh, bring home a story, bring home any points you want to make. As far as closing up the, the message, do you feel like they're ready to take action? That's the only thing that matters when you're closing your message. Do you feel like they're going to take action with whatever you just spoke about? with whatever your objective was. And lastly, during the delivery, as far as body language, we talked about, we talked a little bit about like little secret ninja moves I was telling you, I just wanna give you a little bit extra value to help you know that there are, there are ways to improve your hands, your body language, your posture, and there's a couple of tools on here, of course, to use. Your voice inflections, how well you go up and down with your voice inflections. How well do you stay on time? We witnessed a, a fantastic message. I don't know if you received this, uh, received this feedback, but we received feedback, I did at least, from one of, of the keynote messages at the event. I mean, over did a fantastic message with content, no doubt about it. But the feedback was, wow, he ran a little over. Which is not bad. When you pay a guy a lot of money to come speak, that's okay, but it would have helped if it was addressed. Something like, if, if John would have simply done something like this, guys, I just want to let you know, I'm about out of time. But if Scott's okay, he only paid me to speak to you for an hour, but if he's okay with it, and you're okay with it, can I go on for an extra 30 minutes to give you some more content to help you find your breakthroughs and elevate your performance outside of this one meeting today? Is that okay? Now, if it's not okay, that's fine. You're excused from the meeting. I won't take offense to that because I honor your time. And your time is important. I don't want to take that for, for granted. But if you give me 30 more minutes of your time, I'll give you 30, minutes of, 30 more minutes of breakthrough content that's going to revolutionize your business. Are you okay with that? Is that a fair agreement? If you just would have said that, world of a difference. Could you agree? No or yes? Yes. So sensory acuity. Stay on time. Connecting with the entire audience, we talked about the proximity and the spacing. Storytelling and the ability to act out scenes and using fillers. I want you to understand that there are different ways to help you be great at public speaking. So many. And there's so many tools that are out there for you to get better. My number one objective, again, was to help reframe your way of thinking about speaking and delivering a message. Specifically at a conference, because people pay a lot of money and they spend a lot of time, and I don't take that lightly. I want to make sure people get value. The last thing I'll mention about public speaking is you do not need to deliver every single word that you wrote down. There was probably two sections on my notes that I wanted to get to. But if I would have forced that on you, it would have created disengagement. 
You do not need to deliver every piece of information that you have on the topic. Because what's king? Context. Well, context is really God in the universe, but context is the most important thing. So, in closing, my action steps for all of you. Go ahead and write these down. I encourage you to write these down. I invite you to write these down. If you want to take action steps with public speaking, I encourage you to have pen and paper ready to write some of these down. You can add up where you're at. You see your room for improvement. This is a self-assessment for you. Bring this up to your DVM. Here's a couple of my action steps if you want to increase your ability to public speak. What Carlos may have not told you, and maybe you do or do not know, I spent 300 hours speaking in the school system. I spoke to over 20,000 students during a, a two-year period just to make sure I can craft my skills in professional speaking. So I encourage every one of you, if you want to hone your skills in professional speaking and public speaking and influence audiences, go to your local school district, go to churches, or find different events in your area that you can try to speak at. Simply to serve and to learn. That's it. No other intention. Too many of us in the past, Michael Bromowitz, would go to the schools to speak, to recruit. But I'm speaking tomorrow, or Wednesday rather, to the Great American Teaching. I'm speaking from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. to refine the message I gave to you guys yesterday. Because I want to get it better. <coughs> I want to make that my signature message and make it even better. So I'm going to speak in 45 minutes, period, seven periods. I'm making that a priority. I'm not saying you need to do that, but that's one action step you can take. Number two, Talk Like Ted. I think it's a great book that you can pick up. Talk Like Ted. Number three, when Grab Your Audience comes out in my book, I'd get that one too. Uh -huh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I, I, I encourage you to watch YouTube videos of, of speakers, the Tony Robbins, any, any uh, pres presidential addresses. Watch speakers that you feel you connect with and watch how they deliver their messages. I would encourage you to check some of those out as well. I encourage you to watch, watch messages. This is the last action step. Watch messages and draw out from them what you liked and what you didn't like about their delivery. About their delivery and learn from their errors, learn from their mistakes and continue to grow and evolve your ability to professionally speak and influence audience members. So if you got some value, I'll be at the mixer. Have a great night. Woo! see all different SC1s. I got to see how different, I got to see three different styles of a staff meeting. I had to see three different styles of, you know, all sorts of events and meetings. And I'll tell you this, I mean, I could give you the bio and everything, but when I watched SC1 with the Florida United and the way that that event ran this past summer, I was jaw dropped. I was in the back of the room like with Scott, <coughs> blown away just from the preparation to the group, I mean, he's going to give you the goods. And, uh, you know, one of the cool things on his bio, by the way, all of us should probably have a bio like this that's got details, but he's got the F's, personal interests, faith, future wife, family, fitness, food, here's pilot, get ready, um, fashion, right, uh, football, Baltimore Ravens, right, and uh, to bring you up, to bring him up the right way, let's give Mr. Jeff Gamble a round of applause. Thing in the world is to 
follow messages on how not to F up public speaking. So I really like, you know, am I speaking too fast? My speaking a lot? I don't know. <laughs> um, real quick, before we get into my message, I would like you to write down your biggest takeaways from Mike's message. That would be a, that would be a, a disservice to skip that. Let's start with that. Biggest takeaways, you probably wrote action steps already. Biggest takeaways for you, bless you, God bless you. Like, biggest takeaways for you from Mike's message, outstanding message on public speaking. And this will elicit those over, uh, overdone grunts. Ready? Before I, right? This will elicit the overdone grunts. If you put as much energy and professionalism into crafting, fill in a cutco function as Mike does with public speaking, that's a light bulb. Oh, overdone grunts, come on. <coughs> I like the overdone grunts. I'll give me another um, 15 seconds or so. Let's, let's talk about this. Can I, can I take a few moments just to preface that my message is really not a message, but more so a workshop. So can everyone understand that? That, that this is a... Can everyone understand that? I, I thought you were supposed to... They don't raise their hand. Yes. I'm just kidding. What is that? That was more Michael Jackson. <laughs> So I want to relive only in yesterday, okay? So think about, I want you to just take, close your eyes and humor me for a second. Go back to Olean for uh, uh, Niagara Falls, first day Saturday, the beginning of the conference, specifically when I came up. Okay. I want you to think about the room. What did you see? What did you hear? How did you feel when we started the meeting? Think about that for a second. All right. And the, the two of the three of you that aren't engaged, this isn't for you, right, Mike? Think about how did it start, what, what, what was going through, and then look up, and this is the question I want you to take 30 seconds to write down in your journal, and if you don't have your journal, piece of paper, prefer overtyping into your computer, or grab a piece of paper or write onto the back of this fantastic document, which is my favorite document of the meeting so far. Real quick, think of a time when you experience a high-powered event, and, and ready, let me preface this. Be careful not to put this into a framework of when I saw a great message, right? And Gia was our wonderful writer here. But under the context of an event, let's call it SC1, let's call it division meeting, let's call it a team meeting. What were the high point moments? Describe those events, that event, 